said. Let's make sure I got all of them. Okay, hi, so I'm back. Um, I have all this stuff ready now. Um, I should have thought of that, but I forgot how easy it takes, like how, how quick it is for the decoupage um, stuff. So now that I have, where's that? Sorry, it's a little bit of junk. Um, now that I have the papers on, um, uh, it doesn't look good because it's not blended in. Um, so very rough in appearance, but that's why I'm going to be doing some blending and texturing all around the papers. Um, that's how you can get them to be integrated in uh, your design or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, so I pulled some similar colors. I'm going for the more earth tones with this one. Um, I'm just going to have little pops of colors here and there, uh, but not so much of that. It's just going to be more earth toned and uh, rustic. So I have uh, the Wise Owls Restoration paint. This one is more of a beige sort of paint color. Uh, I have Cashmere, which is a white with a, a gray undertone to it. I also have um, Wise Owls Heavy Metals. This is the bronze, which looks very similar to this. Um, except I used a spray for this one. So for for the base, um, I used Rust-Oleum sprays. I can find it. So I uh, I sanded, stripped, and then I primed. Um, I used a spray primer. That's Rust-Oleum's too. And then I sprayed it with the satin bronze. So this is kind of what you see mostly is the satin bronze. The top has a hammered gold to it. So this is the hammered gold. It um, it gives you that hammered texture with the spray, uh, but you know this is the gold color. And then I sprayed a little bit of chestnut um, to give it some darkness here and there. So this is what I used for the base of my um, vanity. But now I'm going to be adding other things to it. And I have the brown rust. This is the uh, Finnebears. Uh, patina paste. This one's brown. They have other colors as well. This is the red. They have yellow, um, a mint green, a, a bright blue, and I'm trying to think. And then they have like um, some smaller ones that are kind of uh, darker tones too, which is this one's called Dusty. So using that one. And then this is kind of a gray. What's this one called? gray. It's called gray. <laughs> so the gray. Um, and then I'm using the memory hardware powder. This is the taupe color. It's going to give me some texture. So this is the taupe. I'm using that one. And then I also have vintage ivory. So this is a powder too. And it is more of the yellowish, the cream white color so using that as well with those ones and I think that's it for now that's all I'm gonna use for now with the painting all right so I'm going to um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the, the paint colors first with my brushes, let's see. Great. Okay, let's uh, brag. So. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of the restoration. I'm doing this one more around the edges of the paper. I'm just going to press that 
so swing. Oh, it's, it's just gonna do that around the edges of the paper. Sort of um, looks like the color already, so I'm just gonna dab that around some of the edges. Put some paint on the bottom so this sticks down, and then dab it around. So I'm using this more to blend in the edging of my piece. I'm kind of on top of the paper too. really fast. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of the off-white. Um, this is called the cashmere. I'm just going to add a little bit of that here and there. Um, and I'm just using a stipling action, which is when I'm just jabbing it down. Um, I'm not going to be brushing it on because I, I want the texture, so um, I'm just going to be stipling the paint on the piece. on this corner over here. All right. And I'm going to have to brush down some of that with the poly. I even... Oh, I didn't bring my little brush. Oh well. Some of these edges are coming up, so I just need to make sure they're stay down. Okay. So I'm kind of doing it a little bit on the sides too. Some restoration. A little bit more on this edge right here. Let's do more on this edge right here. Okay. All right, and then let's add a little bit of the bronze paint. Now, with a different brush. 
little bit of bronze back on. This is the um, the bronze, the Wise Owls Heavy Metal Bronze. trying to get it blended. And I kind of overlap the, um, the paper too. So it's not um, such a, a line to it. When I overlap it, Bronzing in here. Just want to get it over the edges, especially. That's where you can see. So I'm just kind of dabbing it on and over. Kind of comfortable look. Uh, and this will stay down once it dries. It's just kind of raised right now. But you can see it's, it's blending in more as I add more colors to it. Okay, let's get the other side with the bronze. So I pretty much went over most of the paint. And then now I'm going to add Okay, 
so now I am going to add, I think, some of the powder, um, texture powder. Let's go. I'm going to do the ivory first, and then I'll do the taupe one over it um, because the ivory is lighter in color. Um, I like to use these brushes for the powders. These are um, stencil brushes that Redesign carries. Um, these ones are smaller than the the um, the other stenciling brushes that are with the Redesign logo. These ones are um, yeah they're smaller and they're easy to use especially to get texture and I use these for the pastes and the powders mostly um, so I have a bunch of those ones and then with the powders I use it with poly usually you can use it with a um, this is the master clear I use it with the poly because it helps it stick onto the surface um, if you just powder it on it just comes off because you know there's nothing to get it to adhere to the surface, so you need some sort of um, liquid medium, like a uh, translucent glaze, um, <clears throat> anything that's liquid to help the powder stay on. And then after that, I spray poly it um, even more on top of it so that the powder doesn't rub off um, when you touch it. So that's how I do that one. And so I'm to dab it first in a bit of poly. Now, oh, it has the glue. Dang it. I need to get this glue cover off. So I'm going to use the other brush that doesn't have glue on it. Really need to wash my brushes, but obviously. <laughs> I'm slacking. Okay. I don't want the glue on there. Then I'll do a little bit of the ivory. I just dab a little bit on here and just kind of like pounce it. Like that. So little hairs come off sometimes. <laughs> a little bit on the surface again. <coughs> All right, let's go with a little bit of the taupe. It's darker. Watch out for these little hairs that fall off. With all of these natural bristle brushes, the, um, <coughs> the hairs come off when you're kind of aggressive with them. Add a little bit on the paper too. That's a little bit like that. I'm just dabbing some of the poly first and then pouncing the, the powders on.
does really help it look more blended too. some of the ivory here and there. And just gives it a more of a matte look. It's not shiny at all, um, like mica powders are. These are not metallic, they are matte. Dusting a little white here and there. Let's do it on the leg so it overlaps a little bit too. To like sort of go down a little bit, like this. and then I can add the brown rust. Probably will add a little bit of red rust too, but this is the brown rust um, texture paste. It's really thick. It's kind of it's even gritty. It has this like gritty sand sort of texture to it. Where's the other one? Okay, so I'm just going to. Get some of the brown rust on my brush and just add a tiny bit. Don't need a lot of the poofy brown, just add it a little bit here and there. I just want it to look like real patina, so I'm going to do it more around the corners. Um, more around the edges. <laughs> With uh, real patina for bronze, it's not brown. It, it's more of the blue, bluish, whitish um, sort of tones uh, naturally for the patina, but for the look I'm going for, I don't want the whitish, bluish hues to it. Uh, trying to keep this darker so I'm not really kind of recreating the, the real patina that happens. Um, this is just going to be an artistic interpretation of uh, what actually is real. So I'll just do it around the edges like that. I think it also gives uh, more definition to the edges when you do that, kind of draws the eye over and around so it looks cool when you do it around certain of the areas. There's a, a bit of an applique right here. I don't know if you can see it, but I always um, pounce the patina, especially on the raised details, so that they get more of a definition as well there. Try to keep it a little light, I don't want too much, but I want it to define the surface areas. So I'm adding a little bit here and there uh, with that. Uh, let's see. 
need to water it down a little bit. Yes, the rust really helps. Um, don't be afraid of using the rust. It really gives it the old world vibe immediately um, when you add it. So if that's what you're looking for, you can use it instead of the waxes, the antiquing waxes. Um, I prefer this just because of the texture. I think it really makes it pop and with glazes, you know, it goes on smooth. So if you're doing um, like molds and stuff and you just want something that will get it um, in, in the details and stuff, glazes and waxes do that really well. But I think as far as flat surfaces go, um, using the paste is a bit better, it, just in my opinion. I think the pastes do a better job of it because they're thicker. So you can kind of control it a bit more um, than you can with the waxes and stuff. So I'm just trying to get this on here. Try to water it a bit down, but I don't want it to be too watery because then it just doesn't give me that texture, so I'm just trying to get it. Get it on right. This gets messy. All right, just gonna add a little bit more around the edge. Not too much. Oh, I'm gonna have to pounce this on the surface. It's a bit too much right now. I don't like it when it goes on too thin, so that's not what I'm looking for, so I just kind of have to adjust it. It's okay. I'll add some more beige there. You can always keep adding and tweaking it until you like it, so... That's the good thing about paint and other stuff. <laughs> so, let's add a little bit more at the rim over here. I'm just going to add a little bit on the edges, the bottoms. Hmm. Kind of second thinking. I might add a little bit of blue actually. Didn't bring it, of course, but I think I'm going to end up adding a little bit of blue on these areas where it's kind of raised. I think would look interesting if I did it on the little corners a little bit um, just for a tiny bit of color, but not too much. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do that later. Add a tiny bit of blue in some of these areas. Just going to get it a little bit on the corners.
So let's see. I do have some of the gray. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of gray too to this. It's kind of a, um, a greenish gray. So it's kind of see it it's it's kind of it's got a little bit of the um, green tones to it but it's cool usually I just like to kind of just dapple it on and just kind of layer it you know on top of each other so that it looks looks old. Um, add a bit more of the gray here. So a tiny bit here. A little bit over the, the rust. I'm going to do it slightly under it. 